Hello everybody, it's Stephen and Walter here for another edition of So Chatty, episode 113 for September the 8th, 2023. And for those of you that are observant and regulars, he's playing with his collar, he thinks it's weird. Yeah, I don't anyway. Know. Well, it looks weird. Oh, I'm still wearing my scissors. I was working. Okay, like I was saying, last week we did not have a So Chatty. We intended to have a So Chatty, but I ran into some technical issues not with this or my computer with my email we're going to talk about that in a minute because some of you have gotten some emails from me in this past week asking you to send me test messages but we'll talk about that in a minute first of all let's take a look at what i've been working so of course we're wearing shirts you've seen these shirts before they're walter's creations so he had a lot of scraps uh left over and somebody suggested to me that i should make a quilt from scrap fabric left over from all Walter shirts. So I did. Well, mind you, I didn't give him every fabric. Like the one that I'm wearing now, I didn't. No, you didn't that. give me that. And the little star in the very center of this quilt is actually fabrics that were not used in any shirts. But actually, it did come from me. Because... Yeah, well, you made a bag out of it, I think. No, no, no I, I bought it because I thought I wanted to use it for some reason. And I ended up only using it for a little piece of it. And I still had some left over. Oh. Well, anyways, so this design in the center is actually not original to me. It was a design. It was a free pattern for a Moda called Moda. I always forget what that one is called, and I should have pulled up the pattern to look at it again. It's called Moda what? I don't know. It's a free Moda pattern. Moda what? Moda what? Whatever. I'm sure many of you have seen this pattern before because it's been very popular. So... I cut down all of the scrap shirt pieces into five inch squares. Thank goodness I have an Accu quilt. Made short work of that. And actually, I still have a pile of these five inch squares left over for future projects or something like that. And then after I got the center part done, I just went from there and I just added more things to it to make it a little bigger. And so here's the final version of it. Now, I haven't got it quilted yet, it's sitting on Lucy. Uh, waiting to be all basted in that and then quilt it so that'll happen i'm hoping I, i'll get to it next week i have another quilt a christmas quilt that you've seen several weeks ago the top i want to get that done too but i've been busy making more gnome tote bags which are all for the retreat that we're going to in december and today i finished the last of those tote bags i think so they're out of my hair now Seems like I've been working on stuff for this retreat since January. Oh, that's because I have been. No more tote bags. No more, no more, no more tote bags. Yeah, say that fast five times. Um, let's see. So, yeah, that's what I've been working on. And I have a few other projects that I've done some cutting for. Um, on the pop-up sew day this Saturday, I intend to work on one of those, which is a Halloween quilt. And... Uh, I think I've shown you the pattern of it. It's called Moon and Cats or Cats and Moons or something like that. Um, so I have all the fabric cut for it. Now I can just start working on it. And hopefully on uh, the pop-up sew day, I will get a lot of that done. Um, okay, so Walter has no projects to show you. So announcements. All right. First of all, pop-up sew day, you, as you most of you know. Uh, if you're on my mailing list, you know you've had two mailings actually this week uh, for that. And that's tomorrow, Saturday, September the 9th, starting at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. You don't have to be there at 8 a.m. I know the, those of you out on the West Coast, that's a bit of a difficulty because that makes it about 5 a.m. your time. But it's a come and go. Come, go, whenever. You know, uh, maybe you can only spend a couple of hours. That's fine. You don't have to be here the whole day. It'll end at around four or five, probably about five o'clock in the afternoon. Um, but unfortunately for those of you that are members of Walter's fan club, your God will not be in attendance. Why? Because I'm going to go to the so day at uh, the club uh, tomorrow. He's not very loyal to his fan base. No, That's all I can no. say. Really? You really want to be part of his fan base with the treatment he gives you? Uh, I, I don't think that's that's right. No, I don't. Not really. So I think you should set your loyalties onto my fan base. I don't have one, but, you know, you could create one. Whatever. Um, so, yeah, he'll be doing his so thing all day. I don't go to those anymore because, quite frankly, 
they're boring. <laughs> uh, they're different mentality. People who sew garments and get together, it's like, you know, they're not like us quilters. We're just all fun and giggles and things like that. But, you know, guys, people who sew garments tend to be too serious. They just got their little noses buried down there and away they go, getting those hem lines right or whatever. So, uh, and plus I don't like lugging my stuff. So call me lazy. Okay, so any other thoughts about your little sew day? What are you going to work on when you're at your sew day? My uh, shirt with uh, ferns on it that have uh, coffee stains all over it. Oh, yeah. You, if you saw Stephen and Walter live uh, last Sunday afternoon, Walter showed that fabric, and it does look like it's got little coffee stains on it. I guess that's great. If you drink a lot of coffee and spill on your shirt, you don't have to wash it. You know, it just keeps adding to the whole look, <laughs> I guess. So that's what you'll be working on tomorrow, will you? Okay. All right. Another announcement. Stephanie, sewing with Stephanie and Stephen will not occur this coming Wednesday. Both Stephanie and I are not going to be here. Stephanie is at one of her retreats, um, so she's not available. And Walter and I are doing a couple of overnights, an overnight trip to Stratford, Ontario. Uh, we have tickets for a production of Rent. And uh, so we're leaving on Wednesday to go there uh, for that. So, yeah, there will be no sewing with Stephanie and Stephen. And so if you're looking for the link for it, it is not in the show notes because I removed it for this week. We'll be back on track the following, uh, the week after that. Um, sorry about that, but, you know, life happens. We have one. <laughs> we're taking advantage of it. Um also, just while I'm saying that, there'll be less confusion for those of you who get a little button happy. Um, yes, I, I've got, I had two links, one for Pop-Up Sew Day, one for Sewing with Stephanie and Stephen, and someone always inadvertently hits the wrong button for the wrong event. So like, for example, the other day, somebody accidentally hit the link for Pop-Up Sew Day when they really meant to be at Stephanie and Stephen. You got to read it. I know it can be a little confusing, but just read a little bit about that. And I know when you've hit the wrong button, because guess what? Zoom sends me an email letting me know someone's trying to get into something that hasn't happened yet. Yep. I know everything. Almost as much as he knows. Well, you know everything? You know. Oh, yeah, you do. You know what I don't know? I Google it. What you don't know, you lie about. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so... Let's talk a little bit before we get into today's main topic about my problems with email and why it may not have been really a problem and why it might have just been me being an idiot. Okay, last week, picture it. Do I have to live through this again? Yes, you do. So <laughs> sit there and be quiet because you've been no help. All you've done is play, well, you shouldn't have done that, you shouldn't have done that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing positive came out of your mouth about it so if you don't have anything positive to say shut up <laughs> anyways long story short i didn't think i was getting any emails from people you know i i get quite a few emails during in the course of a day from all kinds of sources and suddenly it seemed like there was a lack of them and i'm thinking is there a problem with my email so we did several tests back and forth that that and the other thing and finally came to the conclusion, yes, there is a problem, and it's at my provider end of things. So I went online, I talked to the provider. Um, the guy did do a couple of things, and everything seemed to be okay after that. But that took two days of fooling around with it. And that's why we didn't do it so chatty last week, because I was too busy working with my email. I do not like it when technology does not work. It consumes me completely, intellectually and emotionally, even to the point where I dream about it if I can get to sleep, because I don't like things not to work the way I want them to work. That's the control freak in me, I guess, or whatever. So anyways, all fixed up, and away we go, and about uh, Wednesday of this week, I'm looking around, and same problem is happening again. At least I think it's a problem. Now, I've had some problems with... I think my email got hijacked somewhere along the way. And so somebody or something is sending uh, scam emails out to people under my name. This happens all the time, not just to me. It happens to all kinds of people. Um, so 
And one of the things that Walter said was, well, you you broadcast your email all over the place. So that's how they get it. So you shouldn't do that. Again, not a positive comment or supportive. Okay. So, yeah, it's true. I do do that. So anyways, today I got on to chat and stuff. I was with working with Bell for about 40 minutes. That I got somebody who knew what they were doing, though, this time. And I could understand them, and the phone connection was good. Last week, I got somebody on the phone. I couldn't, I didn't understand a word she said. Come it, again? Yeah. <laughs> they said, come again? Come again? That's a reference to Little Britain. If you've never seen it, well, you won't know what we're talking about. Anyways, her accent was so heavy, and you know what type of accent I'm talking about, you know usually involves air duct cleaning as well um and i said to her i didn't want to be rude to her but really bell my provider a telecommunications company wouldn't you think they'd hire people on their helpline who have a clear voice that you can understand you know the whole thing about telecommunications is clear communication there's it depends irony. on what nationality you are that it's reasonable <laughs> Bell is in Canada. I expect it to be pretty much Canadian, you know, with a very little accent. This one was a lot of accent. Anyway, and, and their phone connection was horrible. Um, there was like buzzers and bells and echoes and everything. And so that compounded the issue. So I said to her on the phone, I said, I am so sorry. I don't know what you're telling me to do. I said, I, I, for two reasons, I said to her, one, your connection is really bad. And I said, second of all, and I'm sorry about this, but I do not understand your accent. And then it was, I call you back in five minutes. Okay. Five minutes came and went. So did five hours, five days, no call back. Yeah. Okay. So today I mentioned that to the person. They said, well, we'll have someone give you a call. And I said, okay, well, look, I don't want to be waiting five hours for this call. And two, I want somebody that, you know, I'm going to understand. And this one said, it'll be me. This chat person said, I'm going to call you right now. Stay on the chat. Phone rang. She was there. I could understand her. Well, it was a little heavy, but it was nothing like the other one. Much clearer. And she said, I'm going to move this up to the next level. She says, stay on the line. I'm going to connect you with somebody that can maybe help you more than I can. But she says, stay on the line. Okay, that was good. So I got this other person, very little accent. There's a hint of it in the background, but very clear, very clear. Connection was crystal clear as well. And that person was excellent. She knew what she was doing. We tried several different things. And the bottom line is this. I just think it was a coincidence that I wasn't getting as many emails. That's why I sent out today, and probably many of you got the email, where I reminded you of the pop-up so day and asked if you could send me a test message back and i'm very happy to say that many of you did that for me and they came through very clear so my conclusion is this there probably wasn't really a problem technical problem i think it was just the situation it just seemed unusual that i wasn't getting the volume of emails i usually get so anyways keep my fingers crossed that that's all it was everything seems to be working fine now it's important to me that this does work because in about two weeks time or less i'm going to be starting the process for the registration for the retreat in october and i need my email to be working so thanks again to everybody who sent me a little short message i checked it off and everything and i think things are, are working now so that's great Okay, so that's the story there. All right, let's get into today's episode. So, have speaking of helplines, have you gone onto a helpline lately? And um, although the voice sounds human, you get this weird idea that maybe this isn't a human you're talking to, but you're not really sure. I had one of those not too long ago, and I actually said, is this AI? And they didn't answer my question, which said to me, this is AI. AI is what they're now talking about on the news that many companies are going to start using for helplines when people call for the first level of service, you know, because maybe they figure in a lot of those cases it can be solved because it's the same thing over and over again. 
Um, but AI has gotten so good that it is very hard unless they say, hi, I'm AI, which I think should be a law. I think they need to put that into law that if a company's going to use AI, you have to be told up front that you're talking to AI. You know, the same kind of thing as they do. This may be recorded for quality, whatever, or service, training purposes, whatever that, I think they should tell you that it's AI well, because we're going to get more and more of that. Isn't it more like the next level from the menu system that you yes. normally go through and they go, you go through all these menu systems as push one, push two, push three. But now you're talking to somebody yeah. or you think you're talking to somebody. Yeah. That's the thing. Now, actually, I don't necessarily because AI is getting smarter all the time. Um, you know, if it's been programmed properly, it can handle probably most of your questions with it. it that's to be seen yet. But I don't have any problem with that. As long as it fixes my problem. I don't care if I'm talking to a human or to a robot. As long as it fixes my problem. I think for a long time now, the uh, the chat ones that pop up are, are AI to yeah, I think so. as well. And then... Once it realizes that they can't, they can't answer any. Once it goes through an algorithm that figures that you can't answer any more, it pops over to a human. Yeah, well, I think so, and I don't really have a problem with that. Um, I think it's being more efficient, but if you don't get the human voice on it, then sometimes, like, it may not be able to, depending on the sophistication of it. It may not be able to answer your questions. Then it would have to go over to the human with it. Or the worst part is computer says no and it hangs up on you. So again, another reference to Little Britain there. Um, so anyways, I've been thinking, you know, there's been a whole lot of talk about AI now. I mean, the school systems now are starting to develop plans for how they're going to handle uh, AI in the classroom because the kids are all on it. They're having their essays written by AI, and I did my own experiment on that, and you want to know something? It did a pretty good job. The only thing it didn't have was actually direct references from the source of literature. Which, but that's coming. That's coming. You know it is. So it's the brave new world that we've entered into. That's a literary reference. I have a lot of references today. Yes. Did you know that was a literary reference? Mm -hmm. Oh, you did not. You lied to me. I know, Brave. You read a book once. I read it. It was read. Yeah. <laughs> 1984, Big Brother, the whole bit. Yeah. That's not Brave New World. No, I know. That's that. 1984. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We're there, too. Big Brother. Yeah. True. True. Everybody's monitoring you. Yep. Yep. True. And if you don't think you're being monitored, you're naive. Yeah, because <laughs> you are. <laughs> what is it? Some people have are really uptight about having... Uh, being tracked yeah right. like uh some i was uh i bought a new car and i bought a system to put in my new car that will actually um if it gets stolen i can uh uh get it tracked down by police or whatever and uh it uh people have been posting things on the internet so well, i don't want my insurance company tracking me and all this other stuff well i got news for you if you've got a, a cell phone in your pocket you're being tracked <laughs> how do you think that when uh somebody steals something mm. or does a the uh, theft or something like that at a certain location how they can figure out who it is if they have a cell phone in their pocket if yeah. they're stupid enough to have a cell phone in their pocket okay i'm trying to get into where is that okay but um keep everybody interested oh there we go okay i can Okay, I'm just trying to get something loaded up here. Ugh. Nope, it's not working. Yeah, that would be, yeah. This should get me in. Yes, and it's got all this stuff. Okay, so anyways, I got thinking. The AI is in every aspect of our life. AI can write a resume, AI can write an essay, AI can write a presentation for you. Uh, people are using it on YouTube now to create scripts for their YouTube videos. It can draw pictures, and not just draw them, create pictures, uh, works of art, actually. So can it do stuff in the quilting world? So the most popular AI engine is Chat 
ChatGPT. You've probably heard of it. Um, it's the most ge it's ge generic one. Yeah. There are, are industry in the industries that uh, uh, computer industries and other industries, they have had for a long time AI programs that help design programs for other people. So. And actually, ChatGPT can write HTML code for you yeah. for something as well, because I gave it a try. So, yeah, it's kind of scary. But back to quilting. What uses are there for quilting? Because let's we can bitch and complain about AI and robots are taking away our jobs and all that kind of stuff. The fact is, as much as we might bitch and complain about these things, they're not going to go away. Look at the Internet. Look at... Uh, yeah, just email. To, just if you if you choose not to use it, doesn't mean it's not going to move forward. That's and, right, and you're going to get left behind. Yeah, ba basically from it all. It's just a fact of life. We so we need to rein it in and make it work for us, not against us, but for us. So how does that work in the quilting world? Well, I put in some things as if I wanted possible topics. Uh, you know to talk about not so much on so chatty but you know just in general about things so first thing i put in is um i'm just gonna find my first one um i wanted to know what the five um top five quilting or sewing tools for a beginner would be and these have already saved here so i can show you i'll just put it up the screen this is what once you log into it, what chat GPT looks like, and you just essentially down here where it says send a message, you type in your question or details or tell it to do something like write me an essay about why Hamlet in Shakespeare's Hamlet is a tragic hero. That was what I used as an example of an essay. It's a very common essay question in high school. It wrote a really good essay. So I plugged in and saved, so you don't have to watch it creating this, the quilting tools essentials and this is what it came up with i just put in you see at the very top of the screen next to my pictures top five quilting tools and this is how it starts certainly quilting tools can greatly enhance your quilting experience and help you create beautiful and precise designs here are the top five essential quilting tools rotary cutter it explains what a rotary cutter is and how you use it quilting ruler cutting mat seam ripper walking foot or quilting foot and then it finishes off this with these tools combined with your sewing machine fabric and creative vision will help you create stunning quilts with precision and ease well let's say you were at a guild meeting or you were doing a, a class for beginners or something you're a shop owner with the beginners class you're not you don't have a lot of time for putting something like this together well this took less than a minute to put together now there's a little button here that says regenerate so it will find me more detailed information it goes on levels so if I click on regenerate there's what it looks like and it just gave a little bit more information in that last line about a quarter inch foot for precise uh, precise seam allowances I it also changed uh, it got away gave stop it it doesn't have the seam ripper no it has quilting machine yeah walking foot yeah so now see i limited it to five i could have gone up and put in like 10 uh in here if i put in say the top 10 um i think i can do it this way so it doesn't matter if it's capitals Sewing machine, rotary cutter, cutting mat, quilting rulers, quilting templates, quilting pins and clips, seam ripper, thread, quilting needles, quilting gloves or grips. So you see I got even more detail. So depending on the parameters I put in, it will do all of this. Okay, well, maybe this is something we already know as quilters, but maybe a beginner doesn't. Maybe a beginner wants to, or somebody wants to get into quilting, they could go to chat GPT and find out what they basically need now this doesn't replace more detailed information but it's a jumping off point so you know you want to find out more about uh say quilting templates um this just says these come in various shapes and sizes and are helpful for creating consistent quilt block patterns but you might not know what a 
quilting template is. And that doesn't really give you a lot of detail. Well, you could do a search or actually just put in quilting templates. Um, what are quilting templates into chat GPT? And it's going to give you more details about that kind of thing. So you can go down a rabbit's hole here. So the next thing I thought is what about creating a quilting pattern? Let's go down here. Wait, I've gone too far. Oops, I think I went down too far on my list. You've got night, how to make a night patch in Ohio Star. Oh, yeah, okay. So I put in, I guess I don't have one just on um, creating a pattern for a quilt. Oh, yeah, that, okay, that's what I did. So I decided, let, let's have it create a pattern for a quilt. Um, I did one called Canada Quilt Pattern. So, my question to this was, list AI programs that can be used to design quilt patterns. And it says there are several programs that can be used. Electric Quilt, Quiltography, Quilt Assistant, uh, Artlandia Symmetry Works, Quilt Pro. It gave me five here. Now, I know of Electric Quilt and Quiltography I know about, but I don't know about Quilt Assistant or that Artlandia or Quilt Pro. So this gives me something. Oh, I've never heard of these. I would go on to Google. I'd Google them and find out more about those programs. And I might find something that works really well. Artlandia, for example, is a plugin for Adobe Illustrator. And I know a lot of people use Adobe Illustrator for uh, creating original quilt patterns. Um, it also gives you like electric quilt. It says electric quilt also has a randomized feature that can generate a variety of quilt designs based on your specifications. I didn't know about that, or I might have. I have electric quilt, but I don't think I've ever tried that feature. So that just gave me an idea. Oh, maybe I should try it. So you see, there's things here that I didn't know about before. Um, another one I used, quilt patterns, starry skies. I said, write a plan for, no. Oops. Where'd that come from? <laughs> Oops. Plan for peace. Oh, I was experimenting with, with uh, political things on this. It said, plan for peace between Ukraine and Russia. It says, and it came up with, that, you know, it should be a ceasefire, diplomatic negotiations, political settlement, humanized, humanitarian assistance, security confidence. You know, I wonder if politicians use this. You know, like Ford maybe should put in there, how to get out of the Greenbelt scandal wonder what that would say hmm, but that's off topic right now but that's possibility um here you go here's the one i don't know why that one came up underneath there but okay i put in a quilt pattern starry skies i just made up the title finish quilt size i want it 60 by 60 block size i want 12 by 12 these are uh things i put in write a quilt pattern using flying geese ohio stars and half square triangles is what it came up with that's what i put in as parameters it came up with all this other stuff tells you you need flying geese, you know, you need Ohio star units, half square triangles, background colors, and you see it's got all the colors listed that you need, and it's labeled them. And then it talks about assembly. Flying geese units, cut four squares of color A fabric measuring four and a half by four and a half, cut eight rectangles of color B for fa fabric measuring two and a half by four and a half, using the stitch and flip method, attach the rectangles to the squares to create flying geese units with the color B fabric on the top and bottom. Trim the excess fabric to create flying geese units measuring two and a half by four and a half. You know, for anybody who's an experienced quilter, this makes absolute sense. For anybody who's absolutely a beginner, never made a flying geese before, there might be some confusion, but like what it says, using the stitch and flip method. Well, you could just go and look that up and find out, but that's pretty good. And then it talks about how to make um, Ohio star units. Cut one square of color C fabric, measuring that. Cut four squares of color E, use the stitch and flip method. Then how to do half square triangle units. You know, this is pretty accurate. Um, with a minimal amount of quilting knowledge, you could probably make a quilt from this. And I know I could. I've got a little bit more than a minimum amount of knowledge. though, And then it tells you quilt assembly. And it even gave it a name. Congratulations, you've completed the Starry Skies quilt pattern. All right, now, 
you're thinking, well, how does it know this? Well, what it's doing is it's pulling from the internet. This is an actual pattern somewhere. It filled the requirements that I asked it for. I said I wanted a pattern that had Ohio stars and half square triangles and flying geese. It fulfilled those. So it just did a search at lightning speed across the internet and found a pattern that fulfilled those features and it brought and it probably found several and it pulled however it the algorithm pulls out this information and just fused it all together i mean you have to admit that's pretty damn clever you know um i mean sure there's limitations all right but eventually they keep developing this stuff it gets smarter and smarter yeah the future of quilt patterns they're all going to be written by AI, not by humans. And basically, you could write your own then. If you're not good at writing patterns, you could use this. If if you want to make a pattern yourself and use this information, you could, and then you could enhance it to fit your style, which all brings up copyright issues because it's not doing any referencing as to where this information came from. But I think down the road, that'll happen. So what do you think of that? What do you think about if it would it be to tell you how to make a shirt? I don't know. I'll have to take a look. Probably would. How do I sew a man shirt? A. So you got an cow That's okay. It doesn't really matter. Man's Shorts. shirt. Short. Say short sleeve shirt. Short sleeve no that's gone wrong sleeve shirt shirt there you go it's writing it right now sewing a short sleeve man shirt can be a rewarding project here are the best steps to help you sew one materials needed you need fabric and it tells you what kind pattern Thread, interfacing, button, sewing machine, notion, steps, prepare the fabric, tells you how to do that, assemble the front and back. Now, of course, this is pretty basic. Pin and sew the shoulder seams of the front and back pieces right sides together, press the seams open. It's basing it upon the fact that you already have a pattern. Yeah. Create the collar. Sew the collar to the shirt. Or in Walter's case, sew the collar to a sleeve. Um, create the sleeve hems. Sew sleeves. Create the button packet. Add buttons and buttonholes. Finish the shirt final touches touches so just in the order that this is in is this is this a reasonable order is this how you would go about it you probably do your button call button um like it's at the beginning but you could leave it to the end i suppose grit color so the color of the shirt yeah i know you'd have to do your button um your button fronts first before you do your collar. Your collar is more at the end. Okay, so if we regenerate this, does it give us better details? Something about interfacing now. Didn't mention that before. Sewing the shoulder, sewing the collar, sewing sleeves. So there's more details now. Yeah, it doesn't really talk about the button, button, sleeves. button um, button. band. So I wonder if we regenerate it. Go back, go back, go what, back to, to the, the other one. No, no, no. Go up so I can read what it says. Prepare the fabric, cutting the fabric, interfacing, interfacing, uh, collars, cuffs, sewing the shoulders, sewing the collar, without sewing the, the collar, sewing the sleeves, attaching the sleeves, hemming the sleeves, sewing the side seams. See, buttonholes, if applicable, ap applicable. See, and it, it says, doesn't say there about doing the button band at the front if you're, it's assuming that. No, but what it says is follow your pattern instructions to create buttonholes yeah. and attach buttons on the shirt in front. Now, if you read, then they're talking about trying it on and adjusting it as well. Yeah. show the first version. Okay, third version. Do we get a little bit more detail? Same thing with materials instructions take measurements yeah actually measurements should be in. cut out pattern pieces hem the sleeves of buttonholes opposite it's a fairly basic instruction yeah it's not 
uh, I think you still need to follow, get a pattern and follow the pattern with that. But well, it, it did is, say to follow the pattern. Yeah, well, it it is. It's a list of the things that you have to do to make a shirt. Yeah. But um, you kind of really need to follow a pattern still. Yeah. So. But nevertheless, yeah. if you were brand new to it, yeah. you know, where you've got the the pattern in one hand, you've got this list yeah. of checkpoints on the other, yeah. you know, it might be somewhat helpful. Yeah, it would be, yeah. If you don't really know what, what's involved in in, uh, in making a shirt. Yeah. So I also put in um, blocks, like just making a block. Let's say, again, I just use flying geese as an example, but, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of blocks um and you know oftentimes we see a block we like we find out what the name of that block is but we don't really know how to make it or whatever and so we can do a search on the internet and find out how to make a particular block but why not put it into something like an ai program and it'll come up with this so i put in uh, instructions for creating a block made up of flying geese and half square triangles and it says creating a quilt block made up of flying geese and half square triangles can result in a visually appealing and intricate design here's a step-by-step -step guide how to do such a block tells you the materials you need block construction's got to note the following instructions assume a basic understanding of quilting to terminology and techniques so it tells you for your flying geese choose your color calculate the dimensions it explains the ratio in there. Cut the fabric, assemble, how to assemble the flying goose. Uh, half triangle, half square triangle units. Again, the same kind of thing. And then assembling it. Now, this is how you make the block that's made up of flying geese and half square triangles. A very basic type of block. But more complicated blocks, you might be able to find some instructions. Um, again, it may not be enough but it's a start um okay so let's move away from uh quilts and uh, or not quilts but uh on how to construct and let's talk about something more general like choosing a sewing machine okay you're buying a sewing machine for the first time there's thousands of youtube videos about this there's thousands of websites everybody's got their opinion on what's best for you well if you want sort of a, a very simple guideline I put in top five recommendations about buying a sewing machine. Assess your needs and skill, budget wisely, research and compare, test before you buy, consider long-term value, and then a bonus tip, check warranty and return policy. Well, you wanna know something? Those are basically the things I would tell somebody right off the start as a general guide to buying your first sewing machine. But if I regenerate that, I'm sure I'll get many more details about this kind of thing. Um, I know for some of you or for most of you, this seems self-evident, but everybody knows somebody that hasn't got a, a clue what the difference is between a sewing machine and a blender. And they want a sewing machine and they may think just any sewing machine is going to do well. No, I think that first one is very accurate. Access your needs and skill level. You know, what do you need? That's the first thing a good uh, sewing machine salesman will ask you. What do you want to use it for? Yeah, that's what Shirley said to me the first time I went in to look for a sewing machine. The first thing she asked me was, what do I want to do with it? And the second thing she asked me, which is point number two here, is the budget. How much am I willing to spend on a machine? And also another good question is, how much experience do you have sewing? Yeah. So you see this, and this is pulling a lot of information from... The internet already there and merging it together into something that's more uh condensed and more um concise uh how about okay here's a problem i tried to think of questions to ask it that many people have problems with and one of the most popular questions people ask about quilt making is choosing quilt colors how do you figure out what you want to pick now personally for me i don't have a problem with that um pick whatever you like but some people get really bogged down with this. So I put in, how do I choose colors for a quilt? Choosing colors for a quilt can be fun and a creative process, but it can also feel overwhelming at times. Here are some steps to help you choose the right colors for your quilt. Consider the purpose and the theme. 
Gather inspiration. Color wheel. Choose a dominant color. Color harmony. Contrast and balance. Test swatches. Consider background and borders. Texture and pattern. Trial and error. Ask for feedback. Personal preferences. Okay. There's a lot of things there to consider. Um, but one thing they mentioned was color theory. And I did do, and I think it's here somewhere. Um, might be down below because I did this some time ago, this part. I had a thing about color theory because color theory um, really, I guess people... Okay, I can't find it, but let's do it. What is color theory? So they talk about the color wheel, talks about color harmony, color temperature, color psychology, value intensity, color mixing, color and design, color system, color wheel variations. And if you're not sure how to use a color wheel, how do you use a color wheel for quilting? I'll be more specific. So it's given you a fairly detailed explanation of how you use a color wheel. But you can get more specific. If I just said, how do I use a color wheel uh, or that or with color theory, you can mix your terminology together. You'll find out you can pretty much nail it down to specifically what you're looking for. And it will put together that information. Um, now, what else did I look for? Oh, okay. Another problem we have is being inspired. You know, what's our next project going to be? Um, finding, I put in finding quilt pattern uh, inspiration. How do I find inspiration for creating a quilt pattern from scratch? So it says to explore your interests, look at nature and surroundings, Look at art and design, culture and historical references, photography and imagery, personal memories, experiences, textures and fabrics, color palettes, and a whole bunch of other things here. So all of these are giving you ideas on how you can be inspired if you're trying to create something unique. You're probably thinking, well, you know all that. Well, do you? Do you know all that? Maybe you do. Maybe there's a couple of things on here you never thought of before, and it'll spur you on to look uh, for you know, more information or more ideas about it. So you can use AI for creative inspiration as well. What about the history of quilting? Some people are really interested in that. Uh, what's her name on YouTube? Um, she does a whole series on what old quilts can tell you about the time period, about the types of fabrics, how people approached quilting. She And it's very popular. Well, you can find out the whole history. And I did a search with it um where is it i just saw it here quilting through history oh there it is quilting through history i put that in okay so this gives you kind of an overview ancient origins medieval europe colonial america 19th century civil war area great era great depression 20th century and beyond contemporary quilting so it tells you a little bit about all of those but i could take any one of those topics and plug it into chat GPT and would give me more details about that. Say I want to find out about Civil War era, era quilting because I know a lot of people are into the reproduction fabrics from that time period. So you can find out all about that. Um, okay, some so we've talked about inspiration. We've talked about creating quilts. We've talked about color theory, all that kind of thing. Well, what about um, other things related to quilting? Recently, I was on a panel discussion on Stephanie Stitches where uh, a bunch of us talked about what one should know about going to their first retreat. Well, I put in quilting retreat tips. And there's 15 of them. Basic quilting skills you should have. Supplies and materials. Make sure you have them. Project planning. Check the retreat schedule. 
comfortable accommodation, social interaction, workshops and class information, meals and snacks, snacks, sewing machine and equipment, personal space and comfort, basic etiquette, health and safety. See all of this on here. So if you've never been to a retreat before, this is a jumping off point to figure out what you might expect or how you should prepare yourself. So what about shopping? I put in top online quilt quilting stores. I put best online quilt shops. Now this came up with a, a little note said that as of my la last knowledge update in September 2021, it, I can't provide real-time information about the current status of online quilt shop, shops. However, I can give you some popular online quilt shops that were well regarded as of that time. It's a good idea to research and read recent reviews to ensure they are all reputable options. Here are a few online quilt shops that were known for their quality products and services. Well, most of these you've heard of. Fat Quarter Shop, Connecting Threads, Missouri Star Quilt Company, Fabric.com, Hawthorne oh, Supply. Fabric.com doesn't exist anymore. No, well, it, said yeah. it was as of 2021, so there's the disclaimer there. Uh, I don't know Hawthorne, never heard of that one. The Quilt Show, Shabby Fabrics, Craftsy, which is now Blueprint, but it's now it's Craftsy again, and Etsy. Okay, so it gave you these, but there's you might find some of these things that come up on this list, and if you were to regenerate it, you'd probably get more or dip, slightly different ones. You might find some new places to check out. I even went as far as to look for best quilt stores in Canada. Now, these were stores. Um, what's it going on? Here we go. Best quilt stores in Canada. The workroom. We've never been there, but we've heard of it. Uh, we've been to the second one that I can never say. I like fabrics. That's the one that had a lot of cave facet. Yeah. Mad about patchwork. I've never been to the store, but I've ordered from them online and I've re reviewed them online. Fabric land. Well, that the one. Yeah, that's the F store. Not one of the best ones. Um, country concessions i have ordered from them before quilting quarters this one i didn't know about based in new market um hamels fabrics that's in chilliwack british columbia weren't there the stitchers muses in victoria thimbles and things we've been there um Calis calisti quilts that's in moose jaw saskatchewan never been there but i'm sure i could get even more uh things so again uh you know when i review online quilt stores um i go into google and i just say okay quilts online quilt stores in ontario and it gives me a list and i check them out from there um but now i could go in here and use this and find ones i've never heard of before and see what they're all about and check them out and review them now what about trends i thought okay let's see what it can predict or what's happening now you know people like especially if you're going to enter a quilt show you might want to design a quilt that's using current trends with it to keep it, you know, especially when you're doing a modern quilt. So what are the quilting trends? This one, uh, quilting trends for 2021, uh, mainly because I couldn't get anything for 2023. Um, I put, actually I put in what are the current trends in quilting and it gave me information up to September of 2021. So modern quilting is in, art quilts are in, eco-friendly quilting is in, I found that interesting because uh, a lady I recently interviewed from Holland is all about that kind of quilting. Uh, collaborative quilting, minimalist color palettes, incorporating technology, low volume fabrics, texture play, quilt block challenges, custom quilting. So these are just a few it's come up with, what the trends are. So as I said, if you were designing a quilt for a quilt show, you might want to pick on some of these to make your creation stand out from the competition um what about quilting experts i want i was curious to see who they would mention well pretty much everybody we already know alex anderson eleanor burns jenny Beyer, bonnie k hunter and angela walters all five of those everybody has heard of those before of those people before this is as of september 21 um again I might be, if I put in top 10 quilting experts, I'd probably get a longer list. Oh, what? The Idiot Quilter would be at the bottom? Yeah, the Idiot Quilter wasn't on there. Yeah. Sorry. Um, And then, you know, again, sewing machines. This is what it considers, and it 
probably was taking it from how many times these have been referenced on uh, the internet. So these are the top five sewing machines. This is Brother, Singer, Janome, Bernina, Fath. Okay, this is all a matter of personal opinion and taste. Yeah. So right now, chat G GPT, the AI. It says, remember, the best sewing machine to for you depends on your specific needs. Too, yeah, so. so it does have a disclaimer in there. I mean, this is still, although it sounds like it's a hu human being, it is still just a machine okay that we're using here and machines don't have opinions they create stuff from fusing together ideas that already exist on the internet um i'm not sure what i meant by this equal quilting skills oh <laughs> i thought this would be fun are men better at quilting than women no there is no inherent gender-based superiority when it comes to skills like skills like quilting. Quilting, like many other creative and artistic activities, is not determined by gender, but rather by individual interest, practice, and dedication. Both men and women can excel at qu quilting, just as they can in any other craft or skill. This thing is very politically correct, isn't it? Any perceived differences in skill level are likely due to personal interest experience in the time individuals have invested in honing their quilting abilities rather than any inherent gender-based differences. It's important to avoid making assumptions about gender and skill base on stereotypes as those notions are not supported by evidence. Oh, so AI can be very politically correct. I think the answer would have been, yes, men are better. But, oh no, it's going to be politically correct. I thought that was fun to put that in. So what are the benefits of learning quilting according to this? Well, it's got quite a few. Creativity and self-expression, stress relief, sense of accomplishment, hand-eye coordination, problem-solving skills, connection to tradition and history, social interaction, home decor and gifts, learning new skills, sense of community, preservation of memories, environmental benefits. So there's lots of that. What about health considerations when you're quilting? Well, there's always posture and ergonomics, eye strain, uh huh, repetitive strain injuries, allergies and respiratory issues, chemical exposure, sedentary, sedentary, sedentary lifestyle. Being lazy, lifestyle. Yeah. Okay, but uh, we probably all knew these kind of things. But again, it's food for thought. So, age-old question. Should you pre-wash fabrics before quilting? Now, we all know everybody has a personal opinion about this. Let's see what the AI's opinion is. I, uh, that's not it. Where is it? Uh, should one wash fabrics before quilting or not? Yes, it's generally recommended to wash fabrics before quilting, especially if you're using different types of fabrics in your quilt. Here are a few reasons why washing fabrics before quilting is a good idea. Okay, right off the bat, I'm one of I'm of the camp where nah you don't have to pre-wash them, but it says you should, and here's why: it prevents shrinkage, it prevents color bleeding, it stabilizes the fabric or stabilizing fabrics when you do this. Test is testing for allergies, ensuring consistency. Okay, I suppose those are somewhat sound arguments. Um, oh, but then it goes on. However, there are instances instances when you might choose not to pre-wash fabrics oh so it sounded like it had a definite point of view but it's sitting on the fence desired texture antique or vintage look convenience so it says and then it's got a little political statement at the bottom ultimately the decision to pre-wash fabrics before quilting comes down to personal preference and the specific fabrics if you're using if you're unsure you might consider testing a small swatch of your fabric you see how it responds to washing before making a decision for your entire quilt hmm again it's being very politically correct what about storage of fabrics i did a search on that too well you they want you to make sure you have it their, your fabrics are uh, clean and dry it's going here about uh, pre-washing again Fold them neatly. Use acid-free tissue paper. Avoid sunlight, temperature, and humidity. Avoid plastic containers. Shelving or cabinets. Wooden shelves, cabinets, or bookcases are good options. Rotation. Labeling. Avoid overcrowding. Rolling. Pest control. And regular inspection. Okay, there's a whole lot of stuff here, and I'll bet you most of us only follow one or two of these. 
uh, out of it all, but it's good to know, especially like this. I have heard this before, avoid plastic containers because plastic, depending on the type of it is, can bleed chemicals into your um, fabrics. And also, as it says here, it can trap moisture and lead to mildew growth. So, you know, some good ideas here. Again, remember, this is not the be all and end all about any topic you put into it, whether it's quilting or whatever. You still have to use your own knowledge and judgment and experience to temper whatever you're told here. And I asked it about quilting tool essentials. And I think we already went through that. Yeah, we did. So that's just chat GPT. It's fun to play with. I can tell you that. You'll go down a rabbit hole. It's hours of refining what you ask and the stuff that you get from it. But there are some other ones as well. Um, there's one called quilting.ai. Design your own quilt patterns with the help of artificial intelligence. And essentially, I tried this out to see what you get. And it asks you some basic questions. The first one is describe your quilt theme in one or two words. I put in Christmas. You can specify colors if you want, comma, separate it. So I put in, you know, traditional red, comma, green, comma, white, comma, silver. And it says, now mention the type of fabric. Example, batiks or space fabric. I just put in 100% uh, cotton. And then you can put in whatever dimensions your finished quilt are going to be. And any specific ideas for the quilt blocks. Like I put in um, embroidered snowflakes. And then you go to the next page. And the next page, what it does is it just asks you to personalize your pattern title by putting in your first and last name. And then your email address, you agree to the terms, you click on the thing that says you're not a robot and submit. And it says it'll take maybe five to ten minutes and it'll send it to your uh, email. Nope. I tried it four different times over a period of a week. Never once did I get a pattern. So... I don't think Maybe there's something wrong with your email. Oh, screw up. I think that there is a problem with their um, engine for doing this. And they did say something about the fact that um, it their servers, I think, where's this? If we can't handle the traffic load, we may have to scale our servers and technology, which costs money, at which point we may have to charge for usage. Until then, it's free, and limits will be added as needed. needed. So I think what's what they're saying here is that right now i have a feeling their server is down at that yeah. it can't handle it or they're playing with it but they did have examples of what people put in a traditional quilt block sampler with layer cake quilt pattern and these are ones that it came up with and it also came up with the instructions uh the instructions are a little bare bones but um it did have these so i was interested to see what it would have come up for with me but it didn't so yeah so that's another thing another one is called gencraft um now what gencraft does is it's not for quilts necessarily but it will work with quilts you go in and you put in the parameters of what you would like in your quilts this is showing art here and it will generate a picture um, of what you've created. So I think if I log in, I can show you what I mean. Okay, so you put in what you want to describe it. So I want a quilt. No, no shit. Skip. Uh, this one is a paid program too they let you do a little bit um like if you look here at the top i have 10 prompts left they start you with about 130 mm -hmm. but it eats them up really quickly so this will probably be the last one i'm not paying for this uh and you'll see why in a minute um a quilt made with traditional no i'm having trouble typing from way over here traditional blocks 
and a Christmas. Now let's do Halloween and a Halloween theme. Now you can put in as much information as you want and you'll get a better generated. The select the style. That's more if you were doing a piece of art. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to generate and see what we get. It's not, this is not it. This is just something it puts up there to keep you amused while it's generating your creation. Okay. Now, if you look at this closely, you can see what it's done. It has picked images from quilts that are already somewhere on the internet and it's just fused them together to create this picture. It gives you a selection though. It usually comes up with two. So this is another variation, but it doesn't tell you how to make them. So what's the point of this? Well, I think it would be great inspiration. You play around with this and you see different possibilities and then you start to refine it for your needs. And I did this with a Christmas quilt. It saves what you've done. So I did this one here and I asked for a Christmas quilt using green, red, and white with a snowflake and Christmas trees. So I got this snowflake in it, which is kind of pretty. Looks yeah, like, they are blocks are kind of long. Well, they are wonky because what it's doing is it's fusing pictures yeah. together. That's why I say it's not good. And here's another variation. Uh, this one, I said a Halloween quilt made up of squares, half square triangles, rectangles, and uses purple, yellow, uh, I think that was supposed to be red and green on it. Um, so this is what came up with. Now you can see here there's remnants of what looks like maybe half square triangles. Like yeah, you yeah. could you could develop your own idea from this. And here's just another variation. So yeah, this program isn't strictly for quilting, it's for creating art. But I think as an inspiration, as a tool for inspiration using AI, I think it's very effective. Then there is a one. Now this is an app, and I'm too cheap to buy it. It's $4.99 for your iPhone. This is if you wanted to create um, a pattern for taking somebody's picture and pixelating it and making, you know, how they make these quilts out of all little squares that create a picture. Well, this is an app for doing that. Um, I didn't download it because I'm really not interested in doing that at this point moment in time. Um, but you can see how it works. And that's basically a form of AI that's working there. Maybe not strictly AI, but I thought interesting, uh, nevertheless. Um, okay, so I hope that boggled your mind because there you go. Now, purists out there are going to go, nothing can replace a human being in, the, in creating a quilt. Yeah, really? Uh, well, let's think about that, shall we? What do we use to create quilts? Sewing machines. Did we always use sewing machines? Mm, 150 years ago and before, they didn't have sewing machines to use. They were doing it by hand. They were sewing by hand. Now, traditionalists in that time go, these newfangled machines that's supposed to sew for you, I'm not using one of those. I can do a better job. Mm -hmm. How many so people say next, that now? The next thing is you, you get a machine you get you put in you want this in this quilt right and it does it all for you yeah and don't think that's not going to happen because look already in the textile industry in the industrial textiles uh woven blankets are all done by computers and machinery it's not done by humans you know for thousands of years humans did their own weaving now machines do that um and that's not even a new technology, really. That that technology has been around for probably about 150 years. Actually, they're years. talking about doing the fast food, and they're already doing uh, uh, prototypes in some places where where you go in, you order your fast food, and it's all prepared by machines. Think about our long arms with a computer on it. It does the quilting for you. Yes, purists are going to go, that's yeah, cheating. Mm -hmm. No, I always call it the 21st century. Well, I don't know. What, is it is that cheating or is uh, you doing the quilt top without uh, putting the batting or the backing or whatever on it and then bringing it to a long arm and having them do it? Yeah. I say if we have the technology, use it. Look at embroidery machines. They're computerized. 
they i mean i think with anything what it is is that it's another thing that we can use to help us out do stuff yeah it's a tool and you you can make it as automated as you want it to be yeah i mean if you enjoy the process of making a quilt or something doing all by manual labor hand stitching in the whole bit by all means enjoy I mean, that if but, tomorrow they invented a special sewing machine which i'm sure they probably have but uh, a domestic sewing machine that will will automatically put a binding on your quilt oh <laughs> there'd be a lot of people buying that i'd be number one in the lineup for that and there are actually things you can attach to your sewing machine to do help you with your binding i've never bought one of them because they look a little cumbersome but it's just a matter of time before the technology starts going this way i mean we've already have many many examples in our homes already of how things our, our refrigerators and our ovens stoves they're all computerized our microwaves are all computerized everything in our house has a computer in it and in some form and then AI. And, and like in real life you'll they'll find that some things work yep and some things don't work some things catch on some things don't catch on but we can't keep our head in the hole no we have to embrace the technology and make ourselves the boss of it people who say well robots are taking over and be, you know they'll be controlling us no they won't be regardless of the science fiction movies out there about it as long as we use the the equipment we are still smarter than an average machine and that's all robotics are and that's all ai is it it looks like it's smarter but it took human beings there to program it well i could be wrong about that because now ai can program other ai but it had to start somewhere so i don't think we should fear it i think we should embrace it because it's not going to go away i mean look back in the 80s did you have a cell phone now almost everybody has a cell phone and it's a necessity pretty much it's not a luxury item except there are a few of the holdouts out there saying, i don't have a son uh, i don't have a cell phone i know of one person <laughs> that's a subscriber it's like people that don't that. have credit cards yeah how do you rent a hotel room yeah so anyways this episode of so chatty was food for thought to make you think about how we can use technology to enhance our craft our experience with what we love to do and we can pick and choose how much of that we want to use it's not a necessity it's not necessary but if it's something that uh, you know you think is going to make you a better quilter by whatever definition that is for you then i say by all means give it a try so you might want to go and try some of these programs out and i have put them in the show notes i put the links there for it okay now just before we go away just a reminder again pop-up so day tomorrow saturday september the 9th starting at 8 a.m link is in the show notes um i want to say a little bit about for a moment about my email because you know i've put in the show notes of all of my videos uh, my contact information you will now find that has changed what i have put in is see about there's an about tab on all of my videos on all youtube videos if you click on that you will find the email address you might have to um click on a little thing beside it you won't see it immediately and it's asking if you're a robot <laughs> kind of thing or play prove you're a human so you just click on that and then it'll come up i've also changed the address for that uh as well um but the reason i'm doing that is because uh, as part of this email problem i was having um i think my email address was stolen by scammers and it was stolen by way of robots a bots and what they do is they scan internet or youtube show notes and gleam any um links especially email links it can find okay and that's happened to a lot of youtube creators so having it in the about uh it because of the way that works the bots can't get into it because they don't have the ability to click on things with their fingers apparently so yet we'll see how long that lasts so that's why that has changed you can and those of you that still have that you have my email address uh and that well that that's still operational okay 
at time of publication that was still operational okay so that's it for us today any parting words about artificial intelligence no. and the artificial intelligence does not refer to a blonde who's dyed her hair brunette mm. i had to get that in there oh i'm going to get email i'm going to get comments on that one okay on that note okay. it's time for us to go say goodbye walter goodbye <laughs>